welcome to the Unmodeled Attorney Mastermind Podcast. My name is Dave Ahrens, and I'm the founder and CEO of Unmodeled Attorney. In this podcast, we interview our Unmodeled Attorneys, as well as the leading experts in the industry, to identify the best practices for converting leads into paying clients, and how to ethically and profitably deliver unbundled legal services and other affordable options in your practice. To learn more about how our exclusive unbundled leads can help you grow your practice, visit our website at unbundledattorney.com. All right, welcome to the Unmodeled Attorney Mastermind Podcast. Excited to release a new episode and also excited to be sitting next year to Brian Crone, who's a relatively new attorney. We've had some you know, veteran, long-term attorneys coming on in recent ep- episodes. And so this is going to be a little bit of change of gears. Uh, he's... Uh, we've been working together probably about eight, nine months or something like that Coming since up first came online. So, and it's been, you know, quite a journey of, you know, adjustments that needed to be made, infrastructure needed to be established, uh, a lot of systems that need to be put into place that I'm really looking forward to unpacking maybe one step at a time as far as um, starting to understand uh, how much um, delivering on legal services effectively and properly really is a business system. You know, it's one thing to understand and be able to read a Wikipedia that says unbundled legal services is limiting the scope of involvement in a case down to specific agreed upon tasks and offering document services to clients. It's a whole nother thing to be able to put your firm in a position where you actually have a system that's geared towards delivering those services really efficiently at a high volume and at scale. And that's something that uh, that Brian has put a lot of time into into developing uh, to a point where we're at today, where yeah. you know, we're really on the brink of uh, you know being able to execute on that. So, yeah. uh, really appreciate you taking the time to join us today, and looking forward to unpacking the saga. Thanks for having me. Yep. So maybe a, a good place to start, Brian. We can just kind of rewind the clock. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think maybe you can tell us you know where you graduated from law school. I think you're how long ago was that you came out of law school? Uh, 2014. 14. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I was uh, licensed in May of 14, I uh, graduated right here in, in uh, San Antonio at St. Mary's. And during law school, I clerked for I had the wonderful, wonderful opportunity um, to clerk for an excellent civil litigation attorney here in town. Um, there was a, a group of like 20 of us that were hired for a very short term project. And I, I just kind of kept coming to work and eventually other people fell off and that ended up uh, kind of parlaying into four years of working in his office as a, a clerk during school and then as a contract attorney just after I was licensed. Hmm. Um, I always kind of had the idea that I would ultimately go out on my own. And that's what I ultimately ultimately did. Uh, soft launch in September 15, but 2016 was my first full calendar year um, on my own without any sort of buffers to my revenue. Hmm. And uh, I've been full on uh, running my own practice ever since. Was that, did you always have the idea in mind that you would maybe get some of the experience, work under firm for a while, but that you were kind of in the direction of wanting to start your own practice? Yeah, um, that was always the way I'd kind of conceived it. The, it's kind of difficult when you go into law school, you don't really understand what your choices are. And a lot of times where you end up is, is kind of either happenstance or um, you didn't think that you'd do that, but then it turns out to be really something you like. You know, mm-hmm. you tried it, or you, the second thing you tried was what hit. Because um, I remember I, I applied for two jobs back to back. I applied uh, for a job with just this guy who had just come out, and he was kind of running his own deal. And then I applied to Georgia's job. And had I gotten the other guy's job first, which I didn't get, and I was really bummed about that, um, I would it, my whole trajectory would have been different. And so mm-hmm. I didn't get that, and then I did end up getting the the chance to work with George. And so I, I got a very good exposure and excellent exposure into how to do uh, how to practice law in a very detailed way and a very a very uh, meticulous is the word that comes to mind but it's, mm-hmm. it's doing excellent work he had a very very high standard of work and it, it was difficult to meet but it was a wonderful way to learn because now i had that similar high standard of wanting to do the best work at, at the best level that i can um, and that's really been kind of a foundation I've been able to build upon. And it's, it was a wonderful kind of springboard to to running my own practice because I was able to take so many things from my experience there. Yeah. And I can only imagine if you're you know starting to get into a high volume practice, which is, you know, the direction, the trajectory we're heading, yep. making sure you have those kinds of standards as an underlying principle, uh, really make sure that you're finding that that kind of barometer of like, yes, we want to grow. But we also need to make sure that we grow things one phase at a time, so things aren't starting to get out of hand. And, and, kind and you of never want to sacrifice the, the quality of your work. I mean, I'm, and I'm it's, very... it's a challenge not to, right? Because it's like you got one client after another, and you're not able to provide that same level of service. So you have to be able to pull the reins back, and that's and, been part of part of what we had to do here, right? Yeah, it's a uh, 
fortunately i've never had any real issues with that because I'll, I'll, I'll always stay up the extra hour or uh, prepare the extra day to make sure because my 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 goals for what i want to do are going to be higher than whatever the baseline standard is or i'm not going to commit malpractice but that's not the standard i, mean, I don't want to just not commit malpractice i want to do good work for people that's right and yeah. i want to bring good services to the marketplace i want to solve people's problems and i want to do that efficiently and effectively and then that's kind of you know I, I don't want to bill you extra money just because i can I mean, if you really break it down money-wise, you can always find ways to build money. That's not the point. The point, you come to my office with a problem, I want to solve your problem so you can get the lawyers out and you can go live your life. Right. You know, and, and being able to do that um, effectively uh, at scale and efficiently is, uh, you know, efficiency is the, the name of the game because we are a service, it's a service industry. We have 24 hours in the day that we can make use of. You know, you have to sleep some chunk of them. You have to eat. You should go to the gym and you should mm -hmm. probably not do work some other little percentage but then so that your total number of hours is just whatever that subtraction is and and you don't want to be working 19 hour days if you don't have to i mean get things in place but ultimately you want to be able to do good work and then go home you know yeah but that's a it's a a, a lot of work on the front end but, but well worth it well yeah. worth it yeah i'm looking forward to unpacking a lot of the work that you've been doing to sure. build those efficiencies because you're right i mean you give a number of hours per day you can either you know, obviously improve things by becoming more efficient yourself mm -hmm. or leverage your time through business systems, technology, yep. or leverage your time through help of other people, Correct. their time, right? And so there's only a few ways to do it, but if you want to grow and serve more clients beyond what you can individually do, either things have to get more efficient, systems have to take over some of that, or you're going to need some help. And so, yeah, I mean, as I, I was a solo one human being law practice for effectively my first two years 23 of my first 24 months where i'm 100 percent responsible for everything i cannot delegate anything if it's getting done it's i'm my hands are doing it and the, the good side of that is there's no question about the work product because i've done it i know it's done correctly and if i mess it up i'll fix it because i did it there's no question about oh did i he i think so no okay great so everything's good but but that there's a, a limit on what one human being can do right and so i'd grown my practice organically through referrals through my first two years and um uh i had a three-year business plan that i was executing um that i ended up getting divorced in the middle of um just as it as it happened and that that business plan was based on the assumption that my wife's income could handle our domestic you know bills while i reinvested revenue and profits back into my business to arrive at month 37 which would have been january of 19 with a very stable and robust income because i had reinvested that into the, the systems and the the actual business that i was building um and so i actually got kind of thrown for a, a bit of a loop without too much heads up and that's that because life happens that way that's when i got a cold call from graham you know the the following you know, three weeks or so after that that happened and so I'm, I'm just you know trying to come to work and keep my head off the table like push through man this is you'll figure it out just work hard you'll figure it out you know things work out and uh, at that point I had, I had fielded enough uh vendor calls or cold calls of hey i've got a service or hey uh brand new thing that's going to help grow your practice have you ever thought about and i've listened to them enough to know that generally no the answer is no and i'm not going to give you six months of commitment or money or whatever and for some reason i i listen to graham in that initial call and, and i you know i tried to call him on some of the stuff and and i would i try to under oh no, I'll pre, no and he had a perfectly substantive response to my my questions and so we, we ended up talking for an hour and i you know I, it was a big jump on the overhead commitment and you know, get my because it radically increased my my overhead but from literally the first 90 minutes i was live the the volume was just overwhelming where it, it's been since basically last November till now, uh, a real, uh, <laughs> a real intensive struggle to get the systems put in place because that was year three of my business plan was to, op, you know, finally, uh, finally put and optimize the the systems, get those in place so I could take a, a jump in in volume year four, mm -hmm. and it was to get 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 them fully built out and finished and optimized and tweaked and and run stuff through them so that I could know how the flow worked and yes. so when i jumped on board with y'all last year that was partially done 
and mm-hmm. and not the good parts. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know his is thirty percent built out. I wish I could have had another thirty percent would have been more effective. And so I've just been kind of working through getting those completed this year. And uh, we're we're so on. We're, our deadline was December thirty one. We're probably going to make it by about mid January, and we're going to be able to. I mean, we're currently able to roll all of our business through a a systematic systematic procedures intake to uh, practice management, and it is building the systems has been a, a very big endeavor but it is it is the whole in game and it's it's been incredibly fun actually because i i i really enjoy the business part sometimes more than the law right yeah so i, I this is what i want to really, really we can just get right into this sure. piece of it so but what we can do is maybe unpack it one step at yeah. a time right like so you come on board day one you're getting leads i think your second client you landed yeah. a big retainer and so forth so you know things are already moving forward really fast yes. right i mean that's kind of what happens is you turn on account with us and then leads are coming in tomorrow and then the next day and then the next day right yeah. and so take us through you know how you handled those first few weeks so obviously you're trying to manage those deals and then when was it that you kind of realized okay i need to get some help and take us through some of the steps you've taken and i think at some point what we can do is we can start to unpack what are the different um, aspects of the system that need to be optimized what are different ways in which that can be optimized but just take us through your experience yeah and, and kind of what you went through uh phase by phase um initially i <laughs> it, i mean when, when i first uh when i first signed on with y'all i i actually was um, taking leads from multiple counties I, I think it was uh bear comal guadalupe and hayes and that was so overwhelming so immediately that by i think it was like a thursday that i got the leads turned on like by the next monday i, I called grant i was like grant bro something we've got i can't even and he was like well zero you back into bear you'll be good and that that kind of immediately curtailed the the intake to a somewhat do you remember how many leads roughly you got in the first like four or five and that was including oh my the God. weekend i think it was like it was 10 I, or 15 I, I, it was double digits for sure and so yeah. I, I'd gone from growing my practice organically through referrals where I had maybe, I think I had 27 cases on the shelf totally from leftover from 16 and 17 at that point yeah. that, that come in at the, the kind of irregular pace that they do. And if I got four new cases in a month, that was a, wow, that's a pretty rapid month. Mm-hmm. And so when you're dealing with that kind of volume at that kind of rate, the intake process can be well, just a overnight, lot right? less formalized, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so I didn't really have it, an airtight intake process, even though I had a developed, you know, system, you know, I, I know what information I need to get and I know how, you know, I know how to get that information, but I definitely didn't have that uh, packed down into a 17 minute phone call, you know? Right. And so dealing with the first, you know, just this overflow of, of, people to contact and get back to and to set meetings for my scheduling and my agenda and my immediate to-do list to say nothing of the actual work I've already got on the shelf. It just was, it went zero to a hundred where I was not used to or prepared or could kind of expect to deal with so many things immediately. You know, like Mm -hmm. my, my next five days are now being booked up way, way more packed in than they'd ever been before. Right. And so there, the initial thing was figuring out, and I, I was pretty terrible at this for several months um, because I'm a talker, I'm a people person. I want to know the details. When someone calls my office, number, step number one is figuring out what their situation is. I can't even begin to determine if I can help them until I know what their situation is because every every case is different. Right. And I I do uh, organically, honestly care about what's going on. Some you know people hire me, but I also hire them. You know, and I want to know who I'm working with and I, I want to know who I'm helping, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's when you got to stay up late and do the work when you're tired, knowing that it, it's not just a file number, knowing it's Melinda and her kiddo, that's what lets you stay up late to do your best work, right? Right. And so um, I I would just have some of these calls that I think back on and I'm just like, I can't even believe it. I would, I would talk to people for 82 minutes and I'd look down my phone and I would just like, why am I so tired? And, and I just talked for over an hour. I know all the things about this person now. I know all the stuff. I told them exactly what they need to know and, and we're going to move forward with it. But ultimately, the information I got out of that, I could have obtained in about 20, which is where I've got my intake call down to now after yeah. having done hundreds and hundreds and and really cutting to the chase of, I need to ask you, I, I can talk to you at length, but I need to ask you these kind of four kind of subject matters 
and I need to address those in sequence. And then if we need to talk more, we can, but we don't need to talk more about that right now. Cause right now I need to get this information to determine what we're going to do and, and getting that. And that's just rep, you know, repetition and continuing to whittle it down. Um, I, I don't know if there's a way to proactively prepare for that. I don't know if, if you were going to design this, you know, in a perfect world, could you do this the most optimized way? I don't really know if you could just do that from scratch. Cause I think a, a part of it is, is doing it and, mm-hmm. and, and just feeling yourself out to a, a lot of the way that I operate is, um, building in my experiences into kind of my data bank of, of information and decision-making. So like each uh, more experiences, more data informs my decision-making and, you know, hopefully refines it for the better so right. that as I move forward, the decision-making or the system or whatever is, uh, you know, continually being optimized with that new information and outlook. And so it probably took several 80 minute phone calls and the huh, afterwards to get it down to where, you know, I can pretty much usually I can clock in under 15, but really 20 to have. So I'm not just like, Hey, taking information out of you. You can still have a nice conversational exchange with, cause that's, that's also we're in a service, you know, profession. We have to, you know, you, you have to get information in, mm-hmm. in trade form a relationship, you have yeah, to form a relationship time, because yeah. there's, there's mm-hmm. that foundation. And, and to me, it's worth it to develop that rapport with the client on the front end because um, that's just works better for me as a person. And I found that that's, they're going to feel more comfortable. It's, appreciate yeah, it, the time. It, it, it's a feedback loop into itself. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's, let's kind of pack this down into say in, into phases, right? This is right. like initial intake, yep. which I would think encompasses the initial consultation, yep. um, from a process standpoint right now, when we could talk about things about how things have evolved. Um, but initially I think, I think that's probably still the same to today. You receive the lead, you make the calls at this yes. point. Yep. Yeah. And that's, um, I I've listened to every podcast that y'all put out and I know that there are people have had success doing several kind of different systems and I don't think there's really a better or a worse. Um, I tend to have a little bit of reluctance and I've just noticed this overall as I've, you know, brought grant on board and you know prepared to hire a paralegal and and started to build structures where i'm gonna have to let you know that's that is that person's job description they're going to do that 20 percent of work that's no longer going to be under my umbrella well that's no longer going to be on my my fingertips on it so that's going to have to be on them and kind of letting that work go or that i've been reluctant to do that has kind of been difficult to to each stage that i've put that over that's on your task list cool um, and it's just ultimately trusting your people and, and building, you know, building that out and training correctly and getting the systems properly installed and trained and, and developed so that everyone's on the same page about how it works. If everyone knows how it works, then we can all see that it's working and being done correctly and it self checks. Right. Um, but initially I, and I, I haven't, I sell myself. It's, very a, bit of, well. it's a bit of a challenge it too, is. as well to like kind of let go of the reins a little bit and, and put it a little bit of faith. Which I ultimately, I mean, and, and which faith I ultimately is want easier to. when you have training and you have experience working with them and helping them. But and as I, a solo, when you're used to doing everything yourself, right, right. to then okay, I can't do it all myself. And, and then there's the to, there's the kind of the lag time of like, you know, it is going to take me three x time to teach you how to do this thing. Then I can just do it myself. However, investment in you know the long term, and I got I got incredibly lucky um, with with Grant um, being able to to hire him when I did because he's one of, he is my best friend from law school and that law school designator should not be there. Um, but he just was in between jobs when I was just getting started with y'all. And, and I, I I was like, Hey, come work, you know, come to my office for like 10 10 hours, 15, 15 hours. We just, you know, get your feet wet, you know, get you back in the game. And and by like the second day, I, I remember looking him straight in the eyes being like, I will figure out the money. Don't you ever leave. Let's do this. You know, cause it was like, I, I, it, it doubled my capacity. Just having another yeah. human being there to say nothing of someone you're already close with is already in your inner circle of people. You can trust, you know, they're, I mean, he crushed law school. He's mm-hmm. excellent. And we're so symbiotic in our, uh, you know, it's a Batman Robin thing, but neither one of us, you know, are, are over. So we, we just work. You compliment so, each other. Oh well. my God. Yeah. It's amazing. And so that's a very easy person to invest in. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. so I will, I will take all the extra time to, you know, we didn't do it right. Cool. Let's do it. There, there, he he kind of can't go, he can't mess up with me because there's just the mutual respect and appreciation for the fact that it's, it's my hard work, but it's also his now that we get to just practice law together every day 
and this one of my best friends that we get to kind of do this together and like mm-hmm. yeah I, I made it and it's it's you know it's my name on the door and it's it's i'm the one that has to you know if one of us is not going to get paid it's going to be me his paycheck's always going to cash right sure um but that's it's not like a a superiority thing it's just mm-hmm. like i am so thankful that he didn't have a better job right then when i had him come to my office that one day you know right. things work out um so getting back to the original point about uh the intake we've done a little bit where um you know as he's gotten further into subject matters he had no experience in family law getting started so we started from scratch back you know basically in december and so first of all it's like getting the subject matter you know downloaded into him to where he's comfortable riffing on the stuff and that's just time and mm-hmm. you know, actually, listening to a bunch of calls yeah. was there was there some things that you could help with let's say a solo that's you know in a similar position mm-hmm. where they not not able to handle the, the amount of leads that are coming in sure. or amount of business they have which is a really common problem in our network um as far as that that scaling process yeah. when they're going from solo and they're hiring a new associate or new attorney um was there some things that you did to help expedite that training or was there things that you guys just had you did together did you have him shadow you did you listen on some calls what was the way well, in which you guys approached and what and what were the things that maybe you delegated first yeah that's 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 kind of how i was going to approach that question because yeah. ultimately i i have not delegated the um the client uh, outreach and the client engagement um especially the initial client engagement i have not delegated that to another individual yet and that's been because i've been very effective at handling that yeah and so we have a lot of lawyers that never do and, and a lot of them that it takes a while before they and, finally and do and it's only because they have to right and, and ultimately i would like yeah. to be able to divide that task up just for a matter of, of utility you know it, sure. it's always better if more people can do more things because then there's more you know the more options right yeah. um even though even if grant could do all the intake calls i'll probably still do 85 percent of the intake calls mm-hmm. just because i'm particularly good at that not that he can't do it but i've just had a you know I'm successful. We're already putting this, you know, these resources, we're committing it to to this endeavor and that maximizes our return. Um, what I would say on on training so much of of that sales, like I don't have any formal sales background, mm-hmm. but I've got plenty of um, background in language and theater and not being nervous or whatever. So I don't I don't suffer from like the initial I'm not sure how I should execute a sale. I remember reading sales books at a previous job and it was like breaking down the process. And I was just like, well, I mean, I, I get it. I follow it, but why don't you just talk to him? And, you know, so a lot of it's kind of a natural thing for me and I'm selling ultimately myself, my services, um, not some widget. Right. That's right. And so that I don't, I don't know yet and we'll figure it out um, as we grow and, and, I am a little bit more separated from the office. I mean, for so long, it's like my office is me. You right. know? And now there's, you know, there, Grant is basically at, he's at court with you. We're, we're kind of two heads to the same coin. And so as we add people where you can engage with our office and it might be me 30% of the time, you know, as we get that space, then it becomes a little bit easier, I think, to have those conversations. But ultimately it's, it's training your people to know the subject matter because you have to be able to answer the questions yeah. of the client in real time that's kind of the, the point and that's going to depend on the experience and, level who you're bringing and, on and right how and so much that's ultimately a function like, of what they're able to do with the subject matter you know if, if this is a family law operation and you've got five years of family law experience yeah i've got a friend in austin lisa she she could come in and do these calls in a heartbeat because she runs her own practice up there and does it yeah you know, because she knows the subject matter um, and then it's just, you know, it client interfacing. One thing that has been cool is on the back end, um, and, and this is probably how we'll end up doing it is kind of backing into it. Grant is now doing a good amount of client management. It's like even if I'm the initial point of contact with the client, you know, one out of three or two out of five ultimately get put onto kind of his docket where he's the main point of contact for the whole rest of the deal. Hmm. And so that's been a really good, you know, engagement with him to where I've, I've noticed the same thing him doing now that I did eight months ago where it's like he just starts to whittle down the conversations and, and it's just the, oh, I don't need to talk to client X for 45 minutes. I need to talk to her for 10 minutes right now because I need this information. And I know she wants to talk about it for 35, but she doesn't need to pay me for that. And I don't need to be on the phone for that long. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just that process. So that'll probably ultimately wind its way back to, hey, it's a this kind of case, boom, that's going to, that's going to you, you're on it. Oh, it's that kind of case, boom, I got it. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got the last two, I'll take this one. You know, and hopefully when we get a paralegal in here to handle more of the um, client interfacing in general, they can do an initial um, just bare bones uh, intake and then 
kick to one of us for a more deep dive on specifics. And that goes hand in hand with the forms built out in Lexicata because ideally we would send them, you know, hey, thanks for contacting our office. Before you call our office, please fill out this online form that gives us the information we need on the front end. Do you have a prior order? How many kids, names, date of birth? Mm -hmm. Little tiny details that will help us a, be more informed when we had that call initially and B, make that phone call shorter and more effective because we're maximizing 100% of the time on the phone with the client, getting relevant substantive details and information communicated about how we can help solve their problem. Right. And so that's that's kind of a a lot of steps in it, but um, it's it's just knowing the subject matter and being having being able to build a rapport with, with your clients, which I think is, you just gotta jump in and, and learn over time. Yeah, and you this point have the most experience in doing that oh, well. you're representing your you know you're speaking for your firm and it's a big jump i think you know we've had a few firms that have uh unbought attorneys that have had to make that jump because they're getting six seven eight nine leads a day right. and if it was if they had to keep doing that all they would do is be calling leads every day and they did that for a while and then had contractors or associate attorneys they were handing cases off to and that's a very that's and that's that, a very attractive thing like i listen to people doing that and, and that's in my in my head like i would love to get there but that's down there right so yeah. in the meantime there's there's some training and there's some time and investment involved to make sure the person that's doing that call right. that would step in right uh, is capable and is able to get them in the office at the same rough rate roughly than if you were doing it on your own and that's that's no easy task so that's usually a later step that you're going to take so it's not surprising that you know you're still doing the initial calls and, and a lot of attorneys will always be doing the initial calls because they want to have that interface with the client they want to build develop the rapport there, and, there's an underlying thing with and me it's too. your firm it's, too because it, it's ultimately I, I the older i get the more i saw my dad it's my dad runs his own business it's my name on the door at the end of the day it's my, you know, it's my credibility, it's my work, it's my reputation, you know, that is something I take very seriously. And, and it, it's something I care a lot about, you know, I don't, yeah. I don't want people to see my name on a pleading and be like, oh, that, that lawyer is garbage. You know, I want people to see our office and say, oh, they are good people to work with. They are reasonable people. They do very good work. They're going to be prepared. Mm -hmm. They're going to represent their client well, but they're not going to be the worst. You know, they'll call us back. They'll, they'll, they will be good counterparts to work on this. I want, I want, that is what we're trying to build. And that yeah. takes a long time to build and can, you know, get really undercut in very, very quickly. And so it's all of those points of contact with even people that don't hire us. Um, you know, I tell every single client that comes to my office, like, look, my goal is to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I want to get you an as accurate an estimate of what work is involved to get to your solution. Mm -hmm. I want to get as accurate an estimate as I can of what amount of money that costs and what time frame that is. You know, it's not going to be perfect, but I want to give you data so you can make a decision on whether to hire me. And then right. I want to try to get the case done a little bit quick, more quickly than I anticipated for a little bit less money than I originally anticipated. Because even if it's just 50 bucks and I'm giving them 50 bucks back on the end at the because that's what their IOLTA said, that is such infinite residual value because that demonstrates honesty, that demonstrates integrity. I could have mm -hmm. easily changed my billing to keep $50, sure. But if you've already given me 4,500, what is, and, and the math comes out to there's 50 left, that's what you're supposed to do. Right. And, and that client, when they go along their way, if anyone for the rest of time says, I've got a thing alert, they'll be, oh, call Brian or call Grant was great because we, had, and, and so that to me is like, if you do good work, the money will follow. And that's, that's been kind of my underlying theme of building this practice, like do your best work for people and, and be reasonable and, and, and do it as efficiently as possible as efficiently, so that you can give people back money and i'm i'm, I'm sorry to, it's to a get really off, that's, a good that's, idea that's I mean, where you need to pull back really into good focus the efficiency is what allows any of what i just talked about to happen without yeah. efficiency i mean that is that is 100 at the heart of being able to do all the all the stuff because you will be limited in your 24 hours in the day yeah if you all right can't so, maximize it. so let's talk about building an efficient business system yeah. right because you got to a point uh, even with Grant coming on, that it was like, okay, this is still, this fire hose is going to keep going. We, right. we can't handle it. We need some systems in order to, to build to a point of scale. And, you know, all of these things are going to be, some are things we have to do over and over. Right. So, you know, the more systems we have that can help to streamline these processes, mm -hmm. um, the more people we can help. Absolutely. The, the more we can keep our costs controlled. Absolutely. And of course, you know, um, you know, be able to expand to what, whatever your goals of you know, the amount of people you'd like to serve, right? Yep. So um, let's talk about some of the systems you've been working on putting into place yep. and and maybe, you know, maybe you could finish the story a little bit about it. Like, okay, so we got Grant involved, you know, I started training him up on subject matter. He started taking over a few cases, but I think we had to get to a pause point again, right? And be like, yeah. okay, we really need to look at, 
you know, what are all the steps involved with how a client flows through our firm? And, and all of this happened kind of simultaneously because I did not anticipate uh, bringing hiring person number two until probably some point in this year, but really maybe not till next year. We kind of mess with lawyers' plans. And we kind of just throw um, them off. And it's and it's is great because it, it's it has been it's been a, a wonder it's been a great outcome. And so thank you. Yeah, you know, sure. Um, but I I have had very overall in in my work history, I have worked at small businesses where I've always been connected to and interfaced with the, the actual head, the, the head dude, the owner, the, the person who signs the paycheck, the CEO. Um, and so I've always been able to ask questions of that person. I've always been able to recognize them as a human being. I've, and I've had firsthand experience with uh, the different uh, impacts of what good management is and what bad management is. And overall, I've had good managers and and that is a very valuable thing I've always had in the back of my head is that, okay, when I'm at, when I'm the top guy and I've got people under me, I, I take that, I take that almost more seriously. Like I, I, I frequently comment that I care a lot more about grants development as an attorney than my own, because I can go be good. Like I can put the hours in and just anyone can devote the time to be good at a thing, but it's a much more challenging task to um, learn and adapt to how to best put your team in a position to succeed based on their strengths and weaknesses. Well, that, and, honestly, that's leadership, right? That's going from managing to even leadership. Which I take very seriously. Other, yeah, that's and, that's, other. And, and so my point in bringing that up is that uh, hiring, uh, hiring Grant when I did was, was not thought out. There was no forethought. There was no chance to preemptively make some decisions about how I was going to go about this. I've been absolutely just gripping it and ripping it on how to be an effective leader, you know, with the goal and the, you know, consciously knowing what I want my, 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 what my objective is. I want mm -hmm. to not, you know, I want to do everything I can to learn my employee. And I remember it was really funny. <laughs> it's a great anecdote. Um, Grant and I work so symbiotically. It's it's amazing. Um, we are very yin and yang. Uh, the the certain strengths that I have are weaknesses of his. The certain things where I fall short, he really comes and gets the detail. So there's an easy mesh, right? But for like the first like maybe month or two, when I was kind of downloading subject matter, we'd do a new thing every couple of days, and it was a little fast, but he was he was getting it. He would do this thing where I would go back and I'd review the concepts. So we just did a thing. You just know, okay, so so now tell me, you know. And for me, it's like old school theater. You just run your lines until you know the lines. And yeah. You just say them. And that's what I was trying to do. And it was on something small. It was like a like five lines. And and he was getting frazzled about it. And he like he kind of couldn't get it. And and then he he like started talking about it like this random out of nowhere on Mars freaking anecdote possible theoretical for like ten minutes. And I, I remember being like. Bro, there's so much to do. I can't, what are you, this doesn't apply to any, what are you even talking about? And and it was incredibly frustrating for like, for like four or five weeks when he would, every time we do a sub, a new subject, he would go on these real odd random rabbit holes. And we, I finally figured out was that that was how his brain programmed it in, in his framework. And so that's how he confirmed that he internally understood it and could then communicate it back to me right how I needed. And so what I had to, we had to develop kind of a, a signaling system where I could know that, oh, you're going to do your little talky thing. I don't have to listen. Great. And, <laughs> and remember, that, like, was a, that was like a really kind of a light bulb moment in terms of like, like mapping leadership. it out in your mind. Right. By it's talking like, about, okay, right? you need to do your thing. I just kind of got to sort of listen to make sure you don't really mess it up. Okay. But I can devote 10% and I don't have to pay attention to this ridiculous thing you're saying because in, in seven minutes, you're going to come and tell me exactly how it is. Boom. Got it. And we can confirm that we've got it. Right. Yeah. And so I remember learning that, learning that I was, learning how he learned like and having to figure out how his brain worked i never thought about it at that level and i remember that was like a, a kind of a light bulb thing of like man this, this leadership game is a little bit more complex you know because i ultimately want to do everything i can to make him give him the best opportunity to crush it and the next person that comes in and whatever their job is let them maximize their ability i mean i want to build this system to let us you know live comfortable lives and do good work for people and and um, it's leadership is, is tough like that and so that's going to be kind of the last thing after we get our, you know, we've got our systems basically in place now and we're going to get those tweaked through the end of the year. And we should be running full steam with those by mid January, February mm -hmm. at the latest, um, which is, you know, unbundled through Lexicata, through Clio and everything being streamlined and automated through each of those systems for a, a very continuous intake flow to our ultimate 
case management software, which is integrated with Google and uh, stuff on the back end for our email and will ultimately tie into our website when that gets finished getting developed here in the next couple of weeks to, to all have a kind of a seamless integration of information that, that flows back and forth, um, which I, I think is a really great thing y'all have done working with the other programs to, mm -hmm. to connect and integrate because when I originally got on Lex, I didn't initially get on Lexicata, which you absolutely should get Lexicata whenever you start this. Just it's a little bit of money, but it's it is so so incredibly valuable because it lets you keep track of stuff. And well, now Lexicata and Clio are all in one one and suite, so right? Go so. ahead and just do Clio too, because I did my case beforehand, and it was a it was totally effective. I was I was they met my needs for two years, and then I kind of got to a point where my just didn't kind of fit i've got these two things seam line boom it's just didn't kind of fit oh cleo it all fits you know yeah. and and that that synergy is just really i mean it's not priceless it's a big number that lexicata shows you exactly how big it is you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's uh you can win and that's why you should get lexicata because that will get your when you get your head around the fact that Oh my God, I've got literally $1.2 million of case value from January 1 to now. Me, literally, this person right now, my practice, that is unrealized, you know, business is art that's already right here. So the, the task is just getting better at capturing what's already right here. The system is already completely set up. And so just get in a better position to process what you can. And, yeah. and, and that then the, the money will work out. The money is not even a thing anymore because the, the numbers will, it's more of a, an objective of like, how can we accomplish this objective of there is information and tasks being, you know, how can we divvy those up and just handle them? Um, and it's, that's the real thing is the, if you just do that with moderate success, my God, this, I, I think our conversion rate right now is 11% on the year and hell. 80% of those are ultimately unrealized. Like, you know, they couldn't call back. I couldn't get to them soon enough. Their thing lapsed or whatever. We just couldn't because we just didn't have the capacity. Mm -hmm. And and that's why, you know, for being still in student debt, I have no retirement. You know, I'm still like, you know, basically a pauper. Money doesn't matter because we're here at work every day and we've got so much work to do and we've got everything's right in front of us, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, that the money will be fine and it will it will serve to grow um, the whole the whole system because it's just about processing things getting your your work product the language of how you how you want your documents to be um getting your contracts you know for separate things getting i've, I've got a contract for a uh, full representation i've got a contract for a full representation payment plan i've got a contract for a limited scope representation i've got a contract specifically for uncontested divorces which is sort of limited scope because it contains these specific services but it's kind of a hybrid because if it gets contested we just build the additional stuff after that would come yeah. afterwards at hourly and that's but that's become better to have a separate contract for that specific scenario because mm -hmm. we've encountered over your living and scope involvement yep. it, for this i can do all these things if this happens right. then we need separate agreement right, right? yeah right. right but you know originally i had one contract and it was two pages yeah and that worked fine and i've never had really a contract dispute because i'm trying it's pretty clear i do ethical business and if there's a, a break one way or the other I'll, I'll break for the client for sure yeah you know money is not the end all be all and, and it's certainly not worth um fighting with your people you're trying to help you know yeah if it's the you know the one client that paid fifteen hundred with their uncle's credit card and then he contested it and okay well I didn't I did that divorce for free okay mm -hmm. but money's just money man like if you're doing good work it'll be it'll be fine yeah okay so what we I think what we should do Brian is you know we went really fast on on like all those business systems and and integrated with Lexicon then it goes to Clio then you have document automation then you have Google and and do you mean to kind of break down? Kind of, you know, I think what we should do together is just like, okay, so for those of you that haven't worked on these systems, maybe you're just starting to listen to the podcast or you're just starting to follow uh, or even just learning how to implement unbundled legal services in your practice, there are systems you can put into place that are going to make that a lot more efficient. And with efficiency comes a little bit more margin, higher effective hourly rates. And that's what takes the, the business model of unbundling and makes it lucrative is being able to deliver things task by task potentially as under flat rates, but there's different ways to do it. But oftentimes it's done by flat rates because then you can take advantage of the efficiencies such that, you know, the, the clients are happy to pay one rate because other lawyers won't even offer something close to that. Flat rates are great. Yeah, yeah, so flat rates, task by task are really great. And it also lends itself well to building efficiencies because if you can do something that took you three hours before, and let's say it's, you know, $900, three hours to do that, that's $300 an hour. If you can 
cut that in half, you can go to an hour and a half. Now, all of a sudden, your effective value rate went from 300 to 450 or $500 an hour, right? So, efficiency is key for taking the unbundled services business model or profit or, yep. or, or, you know, working with clients on this kind of basis and being able to, to do it as profitably so that you're obviously the clients are happy. And if you're profitable and you can hire, afford to then hire other people to serve you more clients, then uh, the sky's the limit as far as how you can take it. So maybe what we could do, you know, for simplicity's sake, for those that are newer to the business models, let's, let's unpack each step of the process. Sure. There's going to be a lot of different, there's at each different level, there's a few different tools that could be used. Yeah. Um, we can talk about the ones you've implemented. I'll try to highlight some of the yeah. ones that you know, are available through, as well. So I'll people can my choose. System and you can supplement with whatever other options there might be at that stage. Yeah. So let's go maybe one phase at a time. And then for those of you that are watching, take notes. Um, you can do the research online. I'll put the links in the show notes to all the different tools that we recommend or that we recommend that we, that you're implementing yeah. and I'll kind of lay out some other options as well. And, and that way, uh, if you're serious about delivering on money legal services, you're going to have, you know, a good solid toolkit of, you know, all the different things that need to be involved. So, um, so, uh, when a lead comes in through unbundled, uh, it unbundled generates, uh, basically a, a, a small little data point, which is name, phone number, email, and then a little blurb that the client has typed in about the, whatever their situation is. And that can be, you know, custody or it can mm -hmm. be a paragraph you know and it, yeah. it varies but typically from that kind of blurb i can get a general idea of what type you know under under which umbrella is it going to be you know it's going to be one of these four or five kind of cases probably okay it can go there for now we can get a general categorization of so you have that. like divorce you it, have it like basically custody, yeah, it's like it was well, like divorce and modification and enforcement cps involved yeah. oag involved adoption you yeah. know, and then there's some other, you know, more detail, but those are the, you know, 80%. Yeah, it's like establish, modify, enforce, Bingo. custody, visitation, support, Bingo. divorce, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I don't actually at that, at that step, I don't even subdivide it. I did originally subdivide it down um, by subject matter, custody, uh, in, in custody and possession, um, what specific term. But then when I, when I plugged everything in together, that ended up having so many custom fields that it just actually made more sense to kind of narrow it back down because it ultimately doesn't matter if the case is a, uh, an enforcement about possession, you know, did, did kiddo not go where they're supposed to or did child support not get paid? You're kind of doing the same basic thing and detail. Same intake fields. Bingo. Right? Bingo. Yeah. And so, so it's it, really at the level of. It, it yeah. became more effective for me to have less detail at that initial step and then add more detail later when, you know, further on in the in the system because at that initial stage, it, it just, if it's an enforcement, cool. If it's a modification, cool. It doesn't matter what the specific detail on that is. Um, With the exception of some of the forms you might fill out, but then as you bring up the forms, well, all that information is going to data enter anyway. That right? will, so that's a, at a later step. That's at a later step. You're right. Okay. And, and so Unbundled will send that data. Uh, if you use Lexicata, which is a uh, client relations management uh, software, which I highly recommend because it, number one, keeps everything, um, it keeps everything in one space for you to have as a global idea of tracking. You know, Unbundled is giving you all these stacks and stacks and stacks of potential people right and if you try to print those out or try to do them manually or make an excel sheet or something you're creating a lot more work in ultimately handling that data determining am i going to hire this person am i going to talk to them you know lexicata builds all that in right there in front of you and it lets you categorize each of these people through the whole process of i've called them they, yep. It's their decision. Um, we have a client meeting set. We um, are pending engagement. They are ready, ready to rock and roll. I've sent them a contract. You know, there's kind of like yeah, so four like, or five yeah, it's like different phases Bingo. of the Bingo. enrollment exactly. process. Like new lead, step one, right? Bingo. That would be a phase. Then you have, I've called tech. the person once, uncontacted, yep. one. I've called them twice, uncontacted, exactly. two. I've called them a third time and sent them a final email. I'm contacted three. Exactly. Okay, three phases. Okay, now we've made contact with someone. Next phase, right? So it gives you, it yep. takes where the person's at in the funnel Bingo. and makes that clear in a visual sense, and you right? Can, I mean, you can literally drag yeah. and move, you know, you put them in the initial stack of they're a new contact. Okay, and you call them and they didn't answer. You call them again. Oh, and they call you back two days later. Oh, you go right back to the thing. Which you know that's already auto populated from like along, from yeah. bundle, and or you, you can even tag here. it, yeah, bingo, and or you can add adjust it. Yeah, and I haven't even I haven't even gone micro tags yet, and I will get there on the back end. Mm -hmm. But right now it's just functional moving along because um, when I didn't have that, I, I, I held out on Lexicata for maybe like four or five months, yeah. and then I, I I remember when I got it, I felt so stupid for not doing it because I was like. 
back, I was, you know, I was kind of back dooring a manual thing that was, you know, 1% as good as this thing that's right here. It, it's, it feels like a lot of money, especially if you're averse to additional overhead, but mm -hmm. it, it, it tracks your pipeline value, it tracks your money and it puts in perspective, you know, it's, it's one thing it's like, God, man, I've got three more calls. I don't know if I can do, I mean, there's been some days where I've spent, I've spent 8 45 a.m until 7 30 at night literally back-to-back -back calls you know not all on new leads but opposing counsel where it's like i want to throw this cell phone in the ocean right now i can't do one more minute but when you look at it in the aggregate which lexicata is very very excellent at doing and you're like okay well that if i want to just not make three phone it's calls a common expression it's yeah it's like, it's like it's like eleven thousand dollars <laughs> i'm just gonna just set on fire like that's eleven thousand dollars i could try to you know put into the system or I can just, you know, in the aggregate, you know, maybe on a, on a Friday, you want to make that choice. That, sure. But in the aggregate, like it really, it really makes very clear, number one, what you're dealing with overall, but number two, where it is in terms of getting to your onboard and hired as a client, which yeah. is where we transition to Clio. Yeah. And you can see, you can visually see the value of um, accomplishing each task in the process. Cause like if you didn't have a system to track it, a lead would come in, you make them make one call and then it goes into a folder and then you're on to the next one, right? You don't necessarily can see what was lost there by not following up with that person, right? In, and you can even assign values to that, right? So if you start to be I, able to see it visually, yeah. then it's motivating and, and, and clarifying like where are the areas that the system is, we, is we, falling we out? Where are we to, not? Within, yeah. within the first like three weeks of, well, I should say, uh, when I initially got on, and I, I don't recommend doing this either. When we initially got Lexicata, I did not pay for the, it's like 79 bucks or 59 bucks or some additional fee to have it automate with Unbundle. And I was like, no, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll manually do it because it's no big deal. I'm already kind of, and after like a, three weeks of that, I was like, this is so dumb. I'm spending time and, and I can just have these, it, it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, so we have an integration with Lexicata, which basically means when the leads it. generated, absolutely post right it. into Lexicata, so that you don't have to data enter into one system. And then Lexicata has the integration with Clio. with Clio. Obviously, those two companies are becoming which coming together. That um, removes all duplicate work. Yeah. Right. The only thing you have to do is when the initial lead comes into Lexicata, you make sure that and, and you can merge, you can you can mirror your fields in Lexicata and Clio so that they match up. Right? Yes, yeah. And so that way you make sure you get your data you're going to need in Clio later right here initially as much as you can. And you can build that out from your phone call, from your client call. And ultimately, if you need to finalize and finish it out later, you can. But you can get as much of that up front. Boom, that's going to populate right over here into Clio when, if they do hire you. So yeah. you've already got that pre-done. But when like you get in Lexicata and it starts automating, I remember the first time that we I actually got a snapshot of a month of like what the actual scope was. And I, I, I was flabbergasted i was like th there was a hundred and sixteen thousand dollars of case value in this month alone um, if we just we missed how do we miss eight divorces if we just got all the divorce like i remember doing the math if we just got all the divorces that's it and it was maybe 20 percent of the case overall. it was like that puts our revenue at 3.5 x 4 x of where we were Mm -hmm. I mean, it was that kind of scale where it's like, it's not, it moves a little bit. It gives us a buffer. It's like that, that change it. How many, that's like at least that's two employees. That's a buffer on operations. That's, that is stability. I've never even thought about yet, you know, and that, that in and of itself feeds back into more capacity to better facilitate all this, you know, because if you can shoot outsource the, the first parts of, the, of, of that transition from uh, unbundled into Lexicata. If you could have just your paralegal manage that Lexicata and and d divide out which people to call back or who's called back and connect them back to me, have some sort of outsourcing of that within the office, that would severely optimize th yeah. that kind of built-in lag time of, you know, maybe you get back to it, maybe you don't. You're never going to capture 100%, but my God, if you can, you, Lexicata makes it very easy to see where you can make gains and those gains are substantial. Yeah, um, and there's a couple... Uh, online client conversion platforms. I think Lawmatics is another one that's, you know, I think recently come come about, um, who was established by the founder of my case. And then I think Smokeball has some Smokeball is a really cool program. We'll talk, you know, so we talk about intake and conversion, Lawmatics, Smokeball, um, practice management softwares, Clio, Practice Panther. Um, my case was one you yep. used for a period of time. Um, Smokeball being another one. So yeah. 
uh, these are all systems that you guys you, know, you can look into as far as the integrations that we have right now. Uh, that's into Lexicata, which is you know be- becoming part of Clio as well. Um, and we can explore some integrations in the future if uh, attorneys request that we that we create them. Um, but that is isn't isn't it amazing though when you can actually see if only we had gotten to these people, if mm-hmm. only we were a little bit more efficient, because then you can see the value of like if I know that there's eighty thousand right. dollars that we lost there, right. You can really confidently hire. You can really confidently invest in people and systems and skills to because you know the money's sitting there. And it, it's always it's, there. It's just most lawyers don't see it. They don't see that it, opportunity it, it, game. And it's hard if you can't see it to spend yeah. the money, to invest the money, to invest the and, time. I mean, assuming you have the capital, yeah, it, that 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 is all the information. That, that is the most accurate assessment of my current and future financial condition and expectations I should have accordingly. Um, you know, I knew intuitively and just based on volume uh, with compared to last year, so I was like I knew I was handling, you know, interacting with a lot more dollar value overall. Mm-hmm. But until it was able to literally, I mean, that's that's hard data. That's not pretend. That is the actual data. It's all the things. It all lines up perfectly. If you were to pull the Lexicata and pull the unbundled, it would just go right down the list, right? And so when you can look at that objective data and, and see what exactly the scope of it, like I even to, till today, I still had some back uh, from before I, I started automating. I, I just got the last of them put in, you know, outsourced that to um, just a, a office tech. And two days ago is when all of my amount of leads forever are in Lexicata now. And that's, and even knowing that there was a lot of money, it was just like over a million dollars of case value. Mm-hmm. Is it's just like that is a that's a very you know it's like sobering right it's like, it's just yeah. like yeah it, it, it's and also exciting right because you're like wow you know we're doing this well and look what's on the table because right you, because we can see you know you see how 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 small you are right now and how how much there is to capture and yeah. and when you're already uh, working towards that and you know exactly what to do to get in position to do that. It's just like a matter of getting there, which is just, right. you know, put the hours in. Hell yeah, put the hours in because there's so much to gain and so much to, you know, we've got so much progress that is right there. And it's, it's, it's called 2019 in revenue. And yeah. it's, it's going to be, I mean, my, I thought my graph kicked up this year because it did, but next year is going to be even, I mean, it's a hockey stick, man. Yeah. It's, well, it's one of the things I appreciate about you as well is that you, you do look at the numbers oh my and God. you do like track these things. <laughs> My lawyers don't, and and it, isn't it? It's powerful when you look at the numbers. Just to, is you is there's transparency. There's a clear chart ahead. You know what actions can, you can take to that are going to be the most impactful yeah. in your business. What are things that are worthwhile, and you can make really informed decisions. They yeah. inform the decisions, and that's unfortunately I think a lot of lawyers aren't necessarily taught in law school. They, they don't law get the, school doesn't teach you the anything about running right? business at all. So and that's a, a, a shortcoming. I mean, I. A goal of mine is to develop a curriculum and teach at St. Mary's, you know, hey, if you're going to be a 3L and you want to you know, build your own law practice, here's 12 classes over a semester that will kind of give you some actual information in real life, you know, about how you might go about doing that. Because that's not really available in the traditional law school curriculum. Right. Um, and that's, you know, that's a, I think probably an ultimately a disservice to the, the public because if you, you know, it's just, you're coming out to do a service for people and and if if that is inherently limited by your ability or inability to provide that service then you're only going to you know reach a limited amount of people and that's why we always have a shortfall and 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 we have more people that need representation and they can't get it and there's this gap and i think that's a really cool thing that unbundled um effectively kind of helps to narrow because mm-hmm. i've got clients that that they would not they, they don't have a thousand dollars yeah, and that and I get that. You know, right? The better example is five thousand dollars for. I think if someone needed me to give them five thousand dollars today, I, I would have to figure that out. I, I don't just like have that around. I have to make some moves and do mm-hmm. some stuff, right? And so I live in the same world my clients do. Yeah. But you know they don't have five thousand today, but they've got twelve hundred, and we just need twelve hundred for right now. And then four weeks from now, or five weeks from now, or six weeks from now, we can get there. But yeah. that helps you get your thing taken care of right now, and then we'll li- fight to live and live to fight another day. Yeah, I sure. think is the first. Yeah, we'll get there, right? We'll get there. So we we need to unpack that part of it too, which is some of the unbundled service options you've offered mm-hmm. and how you've kind of broken things up as you go on the horizontal plane. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's get there. Let's finish out this kind of business system because right now what we've charted out is okay. Lead comes in, obviously get your leads 
coming into one place, then get it into some kind of a, you know, ideally online system yep. that gives you an interface to track it. You know, like we talked about, you know, the different systems you can do that with. And then also, because that way when you do your intake and you capture the person's name, phone number, email address, where's the county, who are the children involved, yep. you know, what, what court orders have been filed, you know, and all these different things. Once you capture that information once, then that information can then, once you set up your system, it'll, it'll go from one system, which is you've now intaked and then retained that client. And now it's going to go into the practice management software, ideally, right? If you can build that kind of streamline, um, but and you know, it, some systems have it, some systems don't, but right. the, the, the integration from Umbrella Attorney to Lexicata and Clio that has that system. Um, I think if we did integration with practice, practice Panther and maybe work with Lawmatics, that sure. could probably work. So I, I don't want uh, attorneys to feel like they have to go with any specific because um, there's, there's, there's a lot, lot of good out there, right? and, that, and there's different, and there's different price points. And so we're going to work to be able to have integrations with all these platforms as much as we can so that you can choose. Um, right now, we only have these integrations, but we're certainly not married you, to one particular it, solution. I think a point to make is that you don't necessarily have to have an integration over to your practice management software. I, I operated for a year without having that final link. Yeah. In, in my experience, and I, I, I would strongly recommend that you do have that link because it does radically uh, increase the the amount of efficiency. I mean, it just takes a whole. You know, you've got one a data transfer from a bundle to Lexicata to your practice. You've got you got two transfers. It it takes out half of that work. You yes. know, and so it's yes. like you are you collect the information once. Yep, and and you're eliminating extra steps. And so it's the the whole end game is getting the product. Um, provided and the service provided in as few steps as necessary. And sometimes and eliminating having sometimes to repeat fifteen the steps, steps right? you know, yeah. and sometimes it takes fifteen steps. But you've got it to fifteen because you know it can't be fourteen because number fifteen is important. Mm -hmm. But you don't need sixteen because fifteen gets you there. You know, yeah. and, it's, and you don't have and, to repeat it again, bingo. right? Yeah. And so once you can, you can literally get the the flows of work down for each. You know, start number one, a case, you know, a divorce case, a modif you know, what is it globally? Okay. Then you can subdivide it down into there. Okay. When we're going to file this motion, what needs to be, what notes, make sure you do this, make sure you check that, make sure you file here, pull yeah. this copy, go yeah. into a hearing, make sure you always have this, make sure you take that and make sure we internally like to have this summation of data, whatever it is, you know, start big and then you yeah. can kind of work your way more micro because if you, you can always get more micro, but, but it's, it's real tough to kind of go. The other way, which I instinctually kind of did in reverse. You went micro, and, and, then you and had I kind of, like, I was like, hey, we should back be out. there. We should back we out and just get, zoom that out because you can you can work with bigger picture, and yeah. then you can kind of you can kind of add the more. Yeah, detail so what are like there. the the big general categories? Okay, let's separate those Bingo. out. Then Bingo. what's what are the characteristics that are inherent of these ones and not these ones? So Bingo. this is getting a little bit you know into the weeds a little bit, but. It's the way you start to That's, organize a system, it's right? How you organize the system. Like in a, yep. So there's a few things, right? So there's you got the intake phase, like the phases of the enrollment process, which right. is, you know, lead advertising, sure. you know, track those leads until you actually convert. Once sure. you convert, then it gets into practice management software. And now I think this along the lines of what we're talking about right. with, which is now we're looking at each individual type of case. Right. What are all the tasks and steps that are involved with? each of these different types what of cases. What are the deadlines? When do you want to do it? What order you want to do it in? Yeah, some cases are going to have similar types of things. Right. Other cases are not. Um, but just to finish the point from before, once you've captured the contact information for the client and the relevant details, once you move into the practice management, which is the delivery of services Correct. and preparation of services Correct. phase, and let's say such that you're preparing documents and so forth, right. the information you captured in phase one can auto-populate into forms. It can auto-populate into documents. It can auto-populate into tasks. Your and, contacts and matters right? over here, which your case, you know, you're gonna have each case is gonna have its own number, right? You know, have a numbering system. That that all gets built out with a couple mouse clicks. Whereas prior to the setup I have right now, it was a whole other, I had to basically take this, it stopped Lux Cata, and then I had to go, which was not a huge deal because um, the the 10, I was doing 10% of the Lex Cata, leads as a conversion rate. I was only putting 10% of these things over here getting hired, right? Mm -hmm. But as that number increases, that was gonna just expand my work. That's manual work, you wanna cut out manual work. And that's what that bridge from Lexicata to Clio is. That's why it's so amazing because when the when it comes in from the get go, you ultimately are going to land over here, which is you're going to be operating in this practice management environment and space 
for the majority of the time you're going to be interacting with this information. You know, yes. the, the intake initially is very quick. The waiting to get signed or not signed or talking to them or whatever, that's going to be maybe a period of a week or two or three where they're going to fall off. But then you're going to be you know, over here for four or six months on right. a case. And that's where you have your calendar managed and your billing and your document creation. And you know, every case needs a contract. Every case ultimately will need a conclusion of representation letter. Every case more likely, I mean, 95% of cases will need an order of some type. You know, and so there's there's basic essential things that are kind of universal, but they need to have you know tweaked uh, to whatever level of detail you want to divide it out to. You know, right? Exactly. Okay. So, so then that's where you know having all these systems in one place mm -hmm. is going to help a lot because all those all the information you've collected, you know, kind of seamlessly in, uh, flows into Absolutely. whatever it is you're doing: calendar, tasks, Absolutely. billing documents, all these types of things, right? So then that's like the delivery of service. So then those are the overall systems. I think there's a mm -hmm. lot of plugins that maybe we can just kind of riff off a few of. You've got Google Drive or Dropbox and you know, yeah, ways of storage and storage sharing there, files. There's several, there's several online things you, that you're probably very familiar with. I mean, Dropbox and Google Drive. I think uh, Microsoft One, mm -hmm. OneNote might be the Microsoft version for... Uh, One, yeah. I don't, I don't use that, but we use Google Drive and, and Dropbox. Dropbox and Gmail is really our, our two main that's for um, sharing files. Sharing files, yeah. yeah we maintain, um, and what I'm the most excited about with uh, Clio is that they will uh, automatically sync with Dropbox where we can scan, when we scan documents in, we can scan them directly into Clio now. It used to we have to scan them and then move them over somehow. We can now take that step out and scan it right into Clio so it goes right into the client file, which will then put it over in Dropbox and mm -hmm. that, those will mirror each other. And that used to be three more steps in that process to get those two documents where they are. Um, and that's just a little tiny micro detail. That's like when you hey, take, there, when you take those three step bingo and you I do just that say 10, 15 minutes, 10 minutes every oh, time okay. I do that with each individual and client. And then you just yeah. multiply out and aggregate. You're like, that is hours of, you know, not just hours to make money. It's like hours of your life. You cannot be at work and you can go be outside or listening to music or mm -hmm. doing the, getting the fruits of the labor of all this hard work we're doing. Right. That's right. And, and that's kind of a, an important thing to keep in mind because it's very easy to work yourself down to the bone in this job. Cause there's always work. There's, there's always a million things to do and, and keeping some sort of balance, you know, that's gotta be kind of the objective and efficiency allows you to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Gives you those choices where, yep. Hey, I could take on more clients or, you know, I can get the billing to a certain point Bingo. where I have bought back some of my time, time. or I build efficiencies right. that I can now choose whether I want to do more work or if I want to take more time. And that's where I'm bundled. Yeah. That it, it, it's, it works with a bundle because if you're in a bundled situation is the same idea, only the task is limited to one or two things or three things. And yeah. so instead of having a full on case with all of its general tasks and subdivided tasks, you're doing one little portion of it. So there's going to be a little bullet point of two or three or four, and that's going to be boom and that might not be a large number but that number for the amount of minutes that you're doing that thing versus hours you multiply that out that's where you get to your actual effective hourly rate which is the true metric if you're talking about actually trading on your time in terms of business and profit because if yeah do you want, do you want to break that down difference between yeah. like okay i used to bill by hour my yeah, hourly rate this, was this, this is where a flat fee what's really, it effect with like wires like contrast the difference between that and effective hourly rate as far as delivering services, yeah. especially so as it relates to unbundling. I'll use I'll use an example of uh, a responsive document. Let's say the the other party has filed a pleading of some type, and they're they're asking the court to do something. And so you need to go. Your your client comes in and says, "Hey, I got this. I got these papers. I got this paperwork." And so you need to file some document that is responsive to whatever that pleading is. Okay. That document is probably a document that you're familiar with or you know exactly what you need to go figure out to know what you need to do. Okay. And so you've likely either done it before and therefore have general language or familiarity with what the form should look like, what the document should look like, or what it should try to achieve. You know, it's not going to be something, the point is it's not going to be something brand new. You know, mm -hmm. most likely you know kind of what the answer is, what you need to make. Well, if you're just going to do an hourly rate um, thing, the first time you do that document, your first time in practice, it's, it's going to take you five and a half hours, right? Because you don't know how to do it. The more you do it, the more efficient you'll get. I don't four hours, two hours, 30 minutes. If you can get that down to where you know exactly what that document is and have a your, your language defined where you can just plug in values for the actual uh, client, you get to, instead of starting off with a skeleton, you're basically starting off with a full-fledged document that you're reading through to proof and maybe edit in a minor way, which makes your overall time in creating this document, which is the only thing your client, your client's not going past the document. That's our only thing is just that document, right? Yeah. So if we get $500 for a round number on just that one document and that document only took us 
an hour to make. Because, yeah, because we've you've done got systems, it, you've done right, it over and over. Right. The data entry, you didn't have to do it. If we again, were charging that at right. our hourly rate of $200, that would be a $200 charge. That's but right. the document itself being charged 500 which there's looked at in the overall um, function of where it is in the case, that is oftentimes a, a very reasonable uh, yeah, It's a great chart. value. Right? It's a great value to the client because you know over, that does a lot more than $500 worth of value in terms of their case, right? Yes. But then on your end, you only spent one hour, your hourly rate billing is $200, but you just got $500 for this one document for one the same one hour of time. So that increases your your effective hourly rate is $500 for that one hour you spent there. Right. And you can get micro with that or you can get macro with that. You know, you're know, you uh, preparing for and doing a hearing that costs X amount of money, You know, yeah. probably a little bit more than if you were doing the hearing in the context of the whole case, because in that context, your client is giving you a significant amount of, more amount of money. But if it's just right here and we've got uh, eight days notice because you didn't call me two weeks prior and so I've got to mount arrange things, that's going to be this amount of money. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and when you just do little chunks, your actual time spent, um, when you multiply it out to the, the, the hourly rate, the effective hourly rate, it ends up greatly exceeding what you would typically bill at in a traditional hourly billable setup. Yeah. And so that's where you start to realize the benefits on the profit end. Um, and it's also, you know, it, it's a benefit to the client because they don't like get back to the original point. They don't have $5,000 sitting around to pay for the whole thing right now, mm -hmm. which is still the prevailing business model for a lot of the other attorneys that they're going to have talked to before they call you. And so it's been a really easy selling point when they come in. I talked to three other lawyers and they said this, they, they need $7,500. And I'm like, well, I mean, maybe you might over the next chunk of months, but right now you need 1000 yes. to do step one. Yes. And then step two is this and step three is that. And you can just kind of break it down into more bite-sized chunks and the i've had a lot of uh very very positive feedback on that yeah exactly you know we've been to a number of different conferences this discussion is quite common amongst you know the bar associations and so forth we have this huge access to justice problem right and all these you know i think it's like 75 percent, probably on average across the united states of clients that are representing themselves pro se and a huge component of that is it's just too expensive, right? Yep. They can't afford it. And so this is a major problem. And at the same time, these these are the same kind of folks that you're dealing with every day that yeah. would otherwise be turned away and would be become part of that statistic, yeah, I mean, but are no longer yeah, and, going it alone, and right? Yeah. And the, the, I think the myth or the, the issue, I and mean, we bring this up all the time on the podcast, as you know, because you've heard all the episodes, it's like, the attorneys think, well, if I'm serving this 75% of clients that can't afford five to 10 grand, I'm probably not going to make very much money doing that. I don't want to go after that. I want to go after the big fish that can drop 10K at, at a whim and get started with me. But when you really look at the actual there's, numbers, there's a huge market of people. And if we really break it down one phase at a time, there's uh, you can actually become even more profitable delivering these unbundled services. And they may not be able to get the full scope. So and, a lot of times they can. And but yeah, and and the, another thing that I didn't really realize is that, um, you know, you you handle enough client management, you get to a point where you understand this. Like, there's also as an attorney, there's some value in knowing that you're only going to be involved in this thing for a certain amount of time. Because mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we don't we, we try to to get the cases finished. We want to move your ball forward down down the field. We don't want to just have things hanging around. Um, and, and a lot of times the timeline gets out of our hands. We don't control it. Other sides doing this or that. And we, you know, we're struggling. And so that's part of the deal. But when, okay, miss, miss Johnson is going to, we're going to do these two things for her. And that's going to happen on this date. And on this date, our file gets closed out and it's going to be that much money on this date. It really quantifies the work and puts it into, to, you know, okay, so that money can go to this month's uh, deal or that money is going to come in here that can go to that month's expense or whatever you can start to make better use and planning of your actual revenues and you cannot have that obligation go on because maybe you do the first thing for Miss Johnson and it's fine and you do the second thing for Miss Johnson and it's fine but then something goes sideways and you elect not to want to do the third thing you don't have mm -hmm. to offer you're not obligated to do that so there's a there's kind of that freedom on your side that's a value that I didn't recognize initially until you kind of get in and do it and you're like oh that's that's awesome to be able to close that file Close the file. I mean, it's always a good day in our office when we close. We close the file today, today, literally. And Grant, I had to come back and, and meet you, and I was like, "Dude, you gotta go." And Grant took it out and he closed it up, and, and we went to court today, and we closed the file today, and that's mm -hmm. good because that means our clients are moving on with their lives, and that's kind of the point, you know? Right. Right. Exactly. So, 
you know, I think once we, once I think lawyers start to understand how to deliver these services, yep. these are all clients that would otherwise go unrepresented unhelped and be part of that statistic that are no longer going to be part of that statistic. And if more and more attorneys, which is you know really one of the major purposes behind this podcast, can start to embrace these systems and also start to realize that this is a really lucrative business model and there's a lot of clients because it's, 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 a, it's a win endless. to them, right? Because they're really yeah. happy. Yeah. Like when you say, when it, they oh come, God, they come yeah. in and they're like, oh, right. that's the attorney wants 7,500, 5,000. You're like, oh, okay, well, we can get started for $1,000 and we can do these specific and tasks. And then if you want to hire for more, me. you can. Yeah. What that's are the reactions that's you get? Where, that's where I'm the weakest and I'm, I'm trying to get hardened on it. But like the, the, there's a very legitimate, and I mean, I'm, I'm very straightforward with people to begin with. You know, I, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to tell you if, if I can do something for you, if I can't, um, cause the, we don't have time to just like set on fire. Um, I, I respect my client's time just like I expect them to respect mine. You know, their time's important too. Um, I don't want to sit there and talk to them for an hour if I can't do something. But like when, when I do take the 25 minutes to talk about their thing and I haven't asked them for money and I'm just demonstrating that I, I care about learning what their situation is and seeing if I can do something to fix it. Cause you're not coming to me if, if you don't have something to fix. Yeah. And so if I just have a, a basic general, um, consistent you know concern for hey you're the human being i'm talking to here's what i can do for you here's how we can make it happen and i just demonstrate a little bit of flexibility to work to show that i can work with you you know mm -hmm. i can't do every i can't give you uh, all the services for zero dollars i can't just let you not pay till forever you know there's there's parameters but yep. but that that willingness to say like look i i hear i hear what you're saying yep. i i want to do something if i can for you I, I'm here to be on your team, you know, that and being able to, I just, I knew I was, I knew the last time he did this. Oh, and I just, I knew I need a lawyer and I'm, I'm just so, and, and it gets me kind of like, oh, please don't tell me this. Cause it's like, I'm so happy. I talked to you, you know, people, the, the hyperbolic language of like, you're a godsend and all this stuff. And it's, it's just gratitude. And I appreciate that gratitude. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if, you know, money is delayed you know yeah. um which can sometimes happen but again money is not the, the ultimate end goal you know do good work the money will follow and that's right and people that's huge um the client a lot of and it's the it's the single mom who's got the couple kids and who's already strapped or it's the dad who's been rolled over the last three modifications and mom's just really got him over a barrel and damn it he just wants to see his kids because he's a good dude trying his best not making bad decisions you know it's those kind of you know, I don't want to say stereotypical situations, but the they're familiar common, situations that we encounter all the time. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I took a case that I, I the my client owes me several thousand dollars, and and he ultimately will probably pay that money. But that's not important. What's important is that even taking money out of the picture, I was able to. He wouldn't have had a lawyer, but for me, mm -hmm. uh, I was able to work with him, and I I want I won his kids for him, mm -hmm. which was the right decision, you know, not that either parent was really bad, but that was the right decision for the context. And I, he, he was so, he couldn't really tell me how grateful he was because he was facing the prospect of not having a lawyer, mom having a lawyer, his kids getting yanked. And yeah. no matter who you are, that's a, that is a significant situation. And so, um, when people are facing that and they don't have access to an attorney, when, you know, that's the time they need one, it's, it's incredibly rewarding on a very um, just human human level to be able to just do good work for people, man. Like that's that's my objective. Like that's what I want to do. Um, yeah. And and then and work that they would otherwise not be able to yeah, have done, can, right? and so I mean, be at risk a game all of for them, right? all of the, game the possible for the kids, outcomes. Game changer for the, yeah. For the parent, yeah, yeah. The family. And so it's, I mean, I I don't and, and still doing so in the sense, and maybe on that one case, maybe you you know you're still you got funds outstanding and maybe not get paid. Um, but yeah, also, I'm not but writing also, it off. <laughs> but also being able to to do it and still have it be a win for you financially. Which, yeah, and that's, that's the best part about what we're talking about. That's more of an outlier case because that home bundle is a different deal. Where it's like, um, you know, Miss Johnson's case. Yeah, that I was able to do that. That got her situation taken care of for right now. And then maybe she has something in the future. Maybe she doesn't. But right now, she's not facing some situation. Yeah, Boom. and and I was able to do that in a, con a contained, easy, you know, not easy, but a, a very contained and, and efficient way. Mm -hmm. Which you just do it in the aggregate. Your your money takes care. The money will take care of itself. This yeah. system was a game changer for me, and I, I'm, I'm honestly a little bit scared 
uh, of what this next year is going to be like when I start to harness the the actual thing. Because yeah. I mean, I saw what the jump was and what just the the activity was just from last year. This year, doing it inefficiently, fighting over, not being able to have enough time, and just kind of fighting through this this structural thing. But now that we've got it built and we're just going to run the playbook, like it's money. It, money is a dumb metric, but it's it is an obvious metric here, and it's necessary. You know, we all have student loans. We all have to, you know, live somewhere. We all have to drive cars and buy food. And we want to go on some vacations. And, you know, money's necessary, but it's not like yeah. the end all be all. But it's just like the money will take care of itself. The system itself works. The system you all developed for me and my experience. If, I mean, if, if you, if you listen to Graham on your initial phone call <laughs> and if you take the majority of his recommendations yeah. sooner rather than later, you will position yourself to be in a very uh, good spot to, to take advantage of what y'all are, you know, setting up to, to work with. So. I, I, I didn't, I don't want to say I fought with Graham, but I did push back here and there. And in retrospect, I should have just not been dumb. I should have just, but I, I just touched that blind faith. You know, it's like, you haven't let me, you haven't let me wrong yet. And I don't think you're going to, but I just don't know. But then, <laughs> you know, I should have got Alexa caught in January. I got it in May, man. Live, you learn. That's all right, man. Yeah. And it's, uh, you, you, you get to a point where things become necessary and all in due time. But it's, uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure we covered though yeah. is, we're talking about doing a pay-as-you-go one phase at a time. Mm -hmm. This is something we just interviewed uh, Clay Wilkinson. He's one of the attorneys who worked for a long time. And we, we talked about these these planes, right? Horizontal plane of unbundling is one phase at a time. Right. You are going to handle this pace of their case. Correct. On a limited scope basis. And then if you want me to handle the next phase, I can. We'll do a separate agreement. And then there's also on this, during this phase, I um, there's the vertical plane, which is I can do just these parts of it. And then you can do some you know, some some of the tasks on your own. Yeah. Right. So there's kind of a combination where you can get creative around both the vertical, excuse me, the horizontal, these aspects of the case versus vertical, these uh, tasks within those aspects, right? Yeah. Can you talk about some of the and you might have just been working on the horizontal so far. Maybe yeah, my, my commentary is kind of all, along those lines on that. Yeah. Um, I The system is set up exactly as you've described it. And that's exactly how I explain it to clients when depending on what they're on. There's usually kind of a, um, a, a range of understanding or comprehension of what a bundled is. Like they've read the website or they, they sort of know or they, they, they don't know quite exactly right. But when I explain the, the, the breakdown of it, I explain the, the difference in that where I can you know, do a, a task or I can, you know, do partial things or prepare you. I haven't had a scenario where it has been in my view advantageous for the client to like the, the handle some it, things on their own. Right. Right. Because okay. ultimately and that's not to say that it couldn't because I've I've had it several happens, clients but it's less common because if they if they can find a way to afford you to right. have you do it for them, it's they're like, gonna it's, want it's to like right? it's like if you're getting if you're gonna get a lawyer in some respect, don't you need the lawyer like at court when the stuff happens, like that's mm -hmm. kind of the time you need the lawyer the most. And yeah, I could give you the best outline and tell you exactly what to look for. And I could give you color coded everything and flagged and so prepped up and you'd be so ninja out, but you would the client be able to effectively use that in real time when they haven't had the training or know what the systems are to pull. Yeah, maybe, they, maybe, they do, yeah. maybe they could, but then to kind of get that ready, you could have probably just paid me to just do it. And so then there's that kind of balance where you don't ever want to like, charge them more for what ends up being kind of a less a potentially less effective you know outcome you know right. so i always and that gets back to not wanting to offset you know hand off my work i if a client believed that that's what they wanted to do and we were very clear about like you know i think it's better to go this way but if you want to go this way that's fine yeah um, i would do it because that's sure. their election it's their choice but the, I, so the majority of you have been doing is we break it up so you allow them to pay for each segment at a time. Yeah. Rather than just needing like, I need the full A to Z yeah, now up I've front. Got a, I've got a, the, Okay, the, cool. Well, we got this phase. Then we're going to have this phase. If you can pay me this, I can handle this The client this that's coming yeah. in this afternoon, she is, uh, we are doing temporary orders only. And that's going to happen on November the 2nd. And then maybe something happens after that. Maybe not. I don't know. Could, could you break down an example case? I know we're, and we want to wrap up here in just yeah. a minute, but like, let's just do a quick example case, you know, establish custody order like lay out the five to six phases that are common to that case and then how you break, you might break up a case one phase at a time. Um, yeah. Well, so okay. like on a custody case, we, well, first we got to file a petition, then there's the hearing. Right. There's that. We file a petition, we contact the opposing counsel, serve the uh, responding party or the lawyer, um, try to figure out what they uh, think needs to happen on their side, compare that against what we need to have on our side, see what our true issues are. You know, that's a little bit of the internal work. Um, then we typically have a, a temporary orders hearing. Um, mm -hmm. 
sooner than later if there's some urgent thing or whatever. Yep. Uh, maybe there's exit circumstances. Five. Maybe we have a young kiddo, so we need to have a parent facilitator for a certain amount of time because the kid's you know two weeks old as opposed to a seven year old. That's kind of a different analysis, you know. Okay, so um, let's just look at that right there. Yep. So in those phases, there's a number of things that had to take place to mm -hmm. make it happen. So how might you break up just those few steps? If, if someone uh, typically, someone so like there's would, the drafting the petition and then yeah, filing, typically right? if if someone comes to me to draft a petition to initiate legal action, they're kind of want to go sign up for the full deal because they're mm -hmm. kind of they've got an objective in mind. Yeah. But when you just get some papers served on you one day and you don't not expecting it, don't know, ah, and then you've got a deadline all of a sudden and it's court and you're just a lot more of those calls are like, well, I've got a hearing. I got to go to court on this. And I don't know what to. OK, here's what we can do. You need to have your answer filed by the date on the front of the paper. It says mm -hmm. 20 Monday after 20 days to name. That's going to be this date. So here's our date. You know, wherever you were served, boom, okay. By Monday, the whatever, you got to have something on, you got to turn some paperwork in. All right. So that's, that's thing number one. Now it says also you got a, a court hearing coming up. And, mm -hmm. and what is that? Does that say temporary orders hearing? And usually, yep, that says temporary orders hearing on that day. Okay. So on Thursday, on Monday, you got to turn some paperwork in. On Thursday, you got to go down to court and we got to talk about it with the judge. All right. And so, let's figure out what's going on in this case. Are you just gonna be the only person talking on Thursday? Do you have, uh, is grandma coming? Is aunt, uncle, is person who watches kiddo, is cousin who knows about the thing, who does the thing with them? Figure out how many people were involved. Do you have any documents? Okay, well, if you uh, want to hire me to just do the, the answer, we can do that. Make sure you don't, don't risk anything on the front and make sure you turn your paperwork in time. Cool, I can do that. If you don't wanna, cause it's gonna cost more money to go to court and do it and prepare this. Those are two different things, but you don't wanna not turn your paperwork in and then go to court. Cause then you're gonna be, you know, they're gonna say, where's your paperwork, you know? Right, so right, right. We can do just that. And then if you wanna also do, um, or if you wanna do that on your own, and then you just wanna pay me to go to court, we can do that. Okay. okay. So that's gonna be this way. If you want me to just go to the hearing and you can bring the documents and just tell me what documents you bring in, but I don't need to mess with them beforehand. If you're fine, not, you know, we don't have to do witness prep if you don't want to, if you're fine with me just kind of walking you through, you telling me what you just told me, because at this point they'll typically give me kind of the narrative of what's going on and what they feel like should happen. And I can, you know, I can say, we can meet the day before and we can go through, you know, I can write out a really specified, you know, basic direct list of questions and give that to you. So if you're nervous about it, you can take it home and study it. I can do yeah. that for you. That's going to cost more money because it's more work. Yeah. Or if you want to kind of do a, a little bit more condensed version, that's not as expensive, but it also, you know, you're going to have to kind of trust me a little bit more. If you trust me to go in there and get that narrative you just told me and get that out on the stand and, and get that in front of the judge for them to consider and then supplement that with any documents you bring, well, then we can go do that. I won't do the extra thing beforehand. And so it'll be less money. And so I kind of try to, to build in some, some of the, the differing little micro deals. It might just swing at a hundred bucks. It might swing at 150, might swing at 50 bucks here and there, but it at least shows how like you can kind of, I, I don't want to say it's kind of like infinitely customizable, but really it gives it, them like, options, it gives, gives them, them some options, control. And it, and it communicates that I'm willing to work with you at whatever level you want to work with me. Mm -hmm. That's and the overall ultimately thing. what you can afford, Bingo. right? Because it's Bingo. all within the context of this is someone that would be part of the 75%. Money is finite. The, you're sitting yeah. across someone that would yeah. be part of that statistic, that 75% statistic that doesn't have the 5K. Okay, right. so unless you're offering these options, they're going to receive no service. Right. Okay, so... Would they be better off getting some of these services if they can't afford them all or no services at all? Would right? The, it's within that context that we have to evaluate this, right? Would the function of justice at the courthouse every day be better if people had lawyers when they went to court? I mean, there's there's cases we run along, we come up on where we're, we're having to unwind. It's like, oh, y'all both didn't have lawyers when y'all did this last time. God dang it. Yeah. And that's why y'all didn't do that. Okay. I can't be mad at you because you didn't have a lawyer, but... It would have been a lot better if you did, because then you wouldn't be paying me money right now to fix it. That's right. We're happy to fix it, you know, and that's fine. Right. Um, but it, it, it serves the the whole system better if people can go to court represented by, it, even if it's to a just for today. You know, mm -hmm. going to court one time with a lawyer for one day is way better than stumbling into court and not knowing what you're trying to do and being at the mercy of the system or yeah. at the other side who's going to, you know, railroad you or just gumming up the thing and causing some paperwork to get filed or something that right. is not, you know, properly thought through because you don't know, you're not a lawyer. You don't know what you're looking for. That's why you hire one in the first place. But for a lot of people, they can't do that. And so, you know, understanding and, and respecting the fact that their money is limited and that, that money, respecting their money and, and not, not. I feel like there's probably some inherent judgment in 
oh, you, you're not worthy enough to come to my office. You can't, you can't bring me the money I need. It's you know, not, not intentional, but that's, that, that could come off like that to someone who's got, you know, they've got $1,000 in a problem and someone's telling them five Gs. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I might not be able to fix your whole problem, but we can work with what you've got to try to do the best we can. Yes. With, we, we, can we can try to do the best we can. And I can't, I can't promise you anything ever, but I can promise you I can work my hardest with what we've got to yes. try to, to try to give you some help, you know, and it might not be all the help you need. It might not fix your whole problem, but we can do something, which is better than nothing. Anytime you're going down to court with something important, like your kids on the line. So that just gets back to doing, you know, even if it's in bits and pieces and, and hell man, if you're, if you're doing a, a, a hearing for a thousand bucks, you're probably not in there for whatever the number of hours at your hourly rate is anyway. I'm going to take five so, hours. Yeah. Right. So you're probably coming out ahead on that. If you're going in, you had a two hour hearing, you're done by lunch. I'll take a thousand dollars from 9 a.m. till 12. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a great day. Yeah. You know, because then we get to go back to office and do some more stuff. So in the in the actual time that gets the effective hourly rate, you're still ahead of your, you know, which I think a thousand dollars for a hearing is a very reasonable thing. I'm showing up in court and I'm making sure your kids don't get yanked, lady. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I'd, they're super happy that's, about that. Yeah. Right. And and sure, maybe relatively it, speaking, especially right. to what they're looking at as far as their right. options, right? And maybe that costs and the possibility of having to go it alone if but, they didn't have that. But being that able to work with them right? is the is the main thing. And that's the that's the main kind of like um differentiator, I think, is that it, this system positions you just by the way it's designed to bring those services to clients and and real I mean, the the, the amount of people that, that utilize this that are I mean, you just say it's a it is so much. It, I don't want to say functionally infinite, but it kind of is functional. I mean, for the amount of people that are are working, the amount of attorneys you've got, like if you're a lawyer and you decide to say, hey, I'm listening to what Brian says, I'm going to try to do that. And you come and put yourself in this seat right now and do what I'm doing. You will absolutely be able to pay your student loans. Yeah. Well, just, and I think the last thing we can just touch on today is, you know, you have, you know, some goals, some goals to scale, some goals to ramp this up to be able to serve a much higher volume of clients in this same model because yeah. you know, there's a lot of people that we can that we're not serving in san antonio because we're literally like holding back yeah. the you know avalanche of volume of clients that you know otherwise um would be able to be served we just don't have the attorney power and so forth so maybe you could just give us a kind of a snapshot of what your next like three to six months to a year looks like uh, once you have the system in place to give people an idea of you know what's possible as far as where you think you could be able to take this on. Um, do you want like hard number projections based on where I current? Because my, my limiter on growing a law practice is um, I will, it is incredibly unlikely I will ever be involved with a law, a law office, um, attorneys and support staff of greater than 10 people. So nine or fewer people total. Mm-hmm. And really in the near term, I would, there will be me, there will be grant. I need a pair. A paralegal will be hired within the next three to four months. Very. That's that's a real slow play. If I can hire her in January, I absolutely will. Um, after that, probably another support staff followed by an attorney. Mm-hmm. Maybe the other way around. That represents kind of the functional limit of what I could see in the next three or four years being that's the maximum staff but really i could roll with those three provide that paralegal is uh someone that is investable mm-hmm. meaning that they can you know if you're going to be here for a chunk of years and i can teach you right and i can pay you well and you can perform for me and that's you're not going to hop to go to law school you know if you are that's fine but that just determines how much i'm willing to invest in, in that person if that person's investable um then it could be me grant and that person for the next two or three years um, for perspective, I, I grossed 28 my first year in 16. I grossed 57 last year. That was on my own. Got involved with y'all. I should land about 175, 178 by the end of this year. Gross. And then next year, I expect to exceed 300 as a conservative estimate. But that's a very conservative estimate based on my Lexicata numbers. And that doesn't really account for the additional productivity built in by hiring that paralegal. Mm-hmm. Because that just accounts for her overhead cost. That actual productivity of taking things off my plate and therefore in grants plate and enabling us to do additional billable stuff that is not accounted in that projection that's just accounted on basic numbers which should be kicked up i'm very hesitant to say that we could eclipse five hundred thousand dollars in gross revenue by 2020 but the data suggests otherwise Mm -hmm. Um, that 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 seems to be the um the relevant goal and i mean there was 1.2 million dollars of business value from 
January one of eighteen to today. Yeah, that has come into that is that is funnel right here. That is it's it's fishing in a barrel, man. Yeah, and so it's just about capturing that, and so. Yeah, I mean, I just appreciate sharing that because we've had these conversations about your goals and obviously you're, you're coming at it from a standpoint of service, yeah. how you can do work, good work, help as many people as possible. But also I think it's important that attorneys also hear that this is a really great financial opportunity as well right, yeah. to really take this seriously. Because like this is a huge market of people. Yeah. This is a real business. People are making really good money with that. And and. And they can have the confidence to invest into learning this business system it, it pays because for, it, it because pays if more itself. lawyers do it, it pays I mean, for itself. Cause the, yeah, because the reality is we're sitting here on more leads than we can possibly handle, more clients. And obviously, you're in a position where you're like, I can't handle the amount of volume that's coming in. This is the same story that we have in at least half of all the metros in the United mm -hmm. States. And we haven't even got to the next level of all the things that we're going to be doing to promote what it is we're doing. I have to hold it all back. Right. So like, this is a call to arms, like attorneys that are watching this, attorneys that are listening in. If, if you went to, you know, most of you, I think went to law school because you wanted to make a difference. You wanted to serve people. And if you're inclined towards family law, immigration, state, bankruptcy, these areas of laws, these are real life consumers, everyday people that need yep. access to these services that otherwise aren't receiving it. And it's not because they, they shouldn't be or couldn't be. It's really just a matter of attorneys getting educated on how to deliver these service options in a way that you're describing right. with these systems in place. And if you do that, you can make great money doing it and make a substantial impact. And so it's in, in many ways, this is, this is a request. This is a straightforward ask. If this is something you, you know, and, and I, I, and it's helpful for you to be sharing this because then attorneys can get that perspective to, to reach out to us, talk to us about sure. what your goals are. Um, let us train you. Let us give you the systems that you're describing. Uh, yeah, because I mean, we're going to need a lot more lawyers in order to to really cover and ultimately shift these numbers on a, on a national scale. But it's possible. Like this business model has been totally. proven over and over and over again. And I just appreciate the fact that you're on board with it from a from a from a heart standpoint, from a wanting wanting to, uh, for desire to contribution and. From that space, you're also going to be able to benefit significantly financially and, and accomplish you your you goals. You can't do it without the backstop of finances. Like, We're not going to do it. Attorneys, you, you shouldn't have you, to volunteer our way. You can't. We can't volunteer our way out of it, access to justice. It, it, yeah. it has to be a business system that works and it has to be profitable. Because so that, that's so it's a win-win for everyone. That's what makes it sustainable. Yeah, that's our natural desires. We want to be successful. We want to live our ideal lifestyle. We want to live according to our own individual goals. And we want to help a lot of people at the right. same time. So, you know, really, you know... I'm I'm enthusiastic. I'm excited about oh, this next year, man. Oh, I know God, you are. I mean, it's because you and I know know what's on the table. It's um, uh, yeah. I mean, so so anyway. So thank you for sharing, man. And thank I, you I appreciate so much for it. having me on. I really really appreciate it. Yeah, um, wonderful talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, for everyone else that's listening, uh, th this next year is going to be a big year, uh, and it's only going to continue to rise. So if you're if you really um, you know resonate with anything that we shared and interested in working with uh, these types of clients and, and finding ways creatively to serve them. Uh, we can teach you the business systems, get you connected to the things that Brian's implemented. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's worthwhile in the end. And uh, we certainly look forward to and welcome the opportunity to work with you. And as far as keeping it, keeping up to date with the podcast, of course, we have the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash unbundled attorney, or just search unbundled attorney, search unbundled attorney on youtube.com. We're going to be releasing a new podcast episode every single month. We had a little bit of break in the fall, but uh, we're committed to continuing to provide the education, the support, the resources and ideas so you can implement these systems and uh, do it with a lot of success. So thanks so much for participating. Thanks so much for being a part of this movement. And we certainly look forward to look, seeing you on the next episode. For more information about how our exclusive unbundled leads can help you grow your practice, visit our website at unbundledattorney.com. You can watch each new episode of the podcast on the Unbundled Attorney YouTube channel. Or if you prefer to listen, you can find us on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. And be sure to subscribe so you get each new episode as soon as it's available. And remember to leave us your review on iTunes. We read each and every one of them and really appreciate your support of the show. Once again, thanks for listening.